Well, Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right, what were we talking about last week? Don't nobody remember? No. We, uh... we talked about a gentleman who was being uh, asked to curse yeah. the people, right? right? What was his name? Who remembers his name? I don't know that. His Balaam. name was Balaam. Right? Balaam. And Balaam prophesied about the people. Balak, the king of uh, Moab, he wanted, he wanted Balaam to, to curse the Israelites. Most High God told Balaam, you're way before me. In other words, the way you're about to go, the way that's in front of me for you, is wicked, is evil. Perverse. Perverse. Right? Balaam then said, listen, man, forget it. I sinned. I don't know what I did, but I sinned. Obviously, I turn around right now. Most of our guys said, no, I'll go. But only say what? What I told you, to, what I tell you to say. Only say what the most high tell them to say. Right? So y'all gave it to him. He said, don't only tell them what you told them to say. Balaam went up, and what did Balaam say? He said only what God told him to say. Only kept it, he kept it only to what the most high God said. So then we left it at that. Right? Balaam said what he was supposed to say. The people didn't get cursed. In other words, the people got blessed. Right? Then he said a few prophecies about a few, a few of the people in the air, I mean in the area. And we talked about how that would lead up to uh, some of the things that we see in the end times. Right? So that's what we read last week. We're gonna continue on right from there, right? So right after that, Balaam does his, his, his prophecies. It was four all together, right? Three blessings that he gave to the people in one prophecy. Said after that, Balaam goes away. Balaam got to figure out something else, right? Here's what happens. This is uh, Numbers chapter 25. We're going to try to make sense of what's going on here. This is Numbers chapter 25, verse 1. And Israel abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. Uh-huh. And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods. And the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of Yahuwah was kindled against Israel. So now look what happened. Right after all those blessings, right, the people of Israel ended up getting with the daughters of, of the Moabites and the Midianites. Right? They start having inappropriate relations with them. And then, in those inappropriate relations, they started to serve their own, their gods. They started to serve other gods other than the Most High. Even after the Most High has already given us a commandment that we are to do those things. Any of them. Right? Let's see what happens next. And the Lord said unto Moses... <clears throat> Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, uh -huh. that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. Uh -huh. And Moses said unto the judges of Israel, Slay every one his men that were joined unto Baal Peor. And behold, one of the children of Israel came and brought unto his brother an Midianitish woman in the sight of Moses, mm -hmm. and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Yeah. And when Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand. Uh-huh, watch he, what he did. And he went after the man of Israel. He went after the who? Tent, the man of Israel into the tent. He went after the foreigner girl. The man of Israel into the tent. He went after his brother first. But watch what happened. 
and thrust both of, both of them through, the man of Israel and the woman through her belly. To the Jew first and then the Gentile, what the book say. So the plague was stayed from the children of Israel. Uh-huh. And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, How many died? Twenty-four thousand. Twenty-four thousand people died that day, according to the, the book regarding this plague. Right? Keep going. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, had turned my wrath away from the children of Israel, while right? he was zealous for my sake among them, that I consumed not the children of Israel in my jealousy. It was given on the Phineas to judge. Right? The Most High God had already judged it. He's already, it's already in our law. Remember, anytime you got a law and you got judgment, right? If you're in a position as a judge in the people, you can carry out that judgment. Phineas is not no just random guy that's just making a decision. Phineas is a priest of the Most High God. So when he see this going on, him knowledgeable about the Most High's laws and his judgments, it's in his authority to shove a darn javelin through your darn stomach. Right? He's looking at it. You have to imagine the scene of what we're going through at this point. Right? At this point, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with a group of people rebel through the wilderness. We kick back every time the Most High God have us do something. Time is going by, so we got to understand it. We eating this, this bread, the same bread. Imagine eating the same thing every single day. Every single day, you eat the same thing. Ain't nothing changed. You eating the same thing. And it ain't, you know, it's good at first, but after a while, it's like, I had this before. You know what I'm saying? I had this before. I had this before. Of course, after a while, what you going to do? You're like, man, I want something different. So that's what we did. We complained. All right? I want something different. God, give us this. And we talking to Moses, really. So we like, Moses, what you doing? Then we start to rebel against Moses. Like, Moses, you ain't the only one. Right? And remember, before that, the Most High God told us to go into the land that we supposed to be taking. We walk over to that land, we get scared because we see these giants, and we looking like, man, these people is huge. I ain't never seen nobody 11 feet, 10 feet tall. And it's a bunch of them just sitting there tall. I have never seen these people. I've never seen, we ain't never seen nobody as tall as the people that they seen. Who know about Yao Ming? Yao Ming? Imagine somebody being taller than Yao Ming. Taller than Shaq. Right? Taller than Giannis. Taller than... Who else is tall? You know what I'm saying? Taller than AD. You know what I'm saying? Telling all these... The tallest boys we know. You know what I'm saying? They taller than them. They make them look like us. When we stand next to them. Right? They look at that and they say... Oh no. We scared of this. Right? We scared of this. It's not something we can deal with. So all these things are happening. Then the Most High God tells the people after that... Oh, all y'all, that's a fighting age that I numbered. All y'all going to die in this wilderness. Every last one of y'all going to die right here in this wilderness. Right? So now, that's the mindset of the people. Moses brought us out here to do what? To die. We start to have a couple victories. But the mindset of the people is, Moses brought us out here to die. So we find some nice young women, good looking women. You know what I'm saying? They're like cousins to us. You know what I'm saying? Good looking women. Look just like ours. You know what I'm talking about? They nice though. I ain't never seen them before. They dress a little different. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't never seen them dress like that before. We go out there, we start to fraternize with them. And just like women, what women will often do when a man don't have any, any foundation and a man don't have, don't have leadership in them, what women will do is they'll sway the thinking of a man. And a woman can sway the thinking of a man into something that's righteous or she could do it into something that's unrighteous. And if a man don't have a righteous foundation, then he won't be able to determine the difference between the two. So just as that, they swayed the thinking of the men to worship their gods. Now, the most high God's thinking is. Y'all butts got me messed up. So he started to kill him with a plague. And it didn't stop until Phineas thrust through the gentleman that had the woman there. And he killed them both. Then the Most High God stayed his hand. Keep going. Watch this. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. Mm -hmm. He shall have it and his seed after him. Even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God. 
and made an atonement for the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now the name of the Israelite that was slain, even that was slain with the Midianitish woman, was Zimri, the son of Salu, of the prince of the chief house among the Simeonites. All right? So it was a man of Simeon. He was at the chief house, so he was ahead. He wasn't a nobody, right? Mm -hmm. he, was a, he, he ran the show in Simeon, right? He's the one who died. His name is what? Salu. No. Oh, Zimri. His name is Zimri. The son of Salu. All right? So now we're going to come back to Zimri in a little bit because we're going to look at the difference of the numbers after all this stuff go down. We're going to end up counting our people again because we see one thing that was all the stuff that we've been reading. It doesn't really give us the time frames. It just kind of jumped from we, you know, two years in. And then next thing we're going to know, we is past 40 years. Right. So very soon it's going to let us know we at the end of the 40 years and we're going to count the people again. That's going to end up going into the uh, promised land. And all the people that died off is already removed except for uh, Joseph and uh, Caleb. Joseph and, uh, I mean, not Joseph, Caleb, uh, Joshua. Yeah, Joshua and Caleb. You know what I'm saying? Yahushua, the son of Jephunny. Son of none. I mean, uh, uh, Caleb, the son of Jephunny. Yeah. Um, let's, let's keep going. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Vex the Midianites and smite them, for they vex you with their wiles, where they have beguiled you in the matter of Peor and in the matter of Cosby, mm -hmm. the daughter of a prince of Midian, their sister, which was slain in the day of the plague for Peor's sake. Now, they said beguiled you. What does beguiled mean? Tricked. They tricked you. There's a reason why he said that. We're going to get into it. Not yet, but we're going to get into the reason why he said that they tricked them. Right? What the Most High God is saying is they beguiled you. So it wasn't like they just came over here and there's some beautiful women and, you know, this naturally happened and oops, we have you serving the wrong God. No, they came down there with a purpose. Is what the Most High God is suggesting right now. Right? So let's keep going. What else we got? And it came to pass after the plague that the Lord spake unto Moses, unto Eliezer, and unto Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and upward and throughout their father's house. All uh -huh. that are able to go to war in Israel. He said all that are what? Able to go to war in Israel. Oh, keep going. And Moses and Eliezer the priest spake with them in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho saying, Take the sum of the people from 20 years old and upward. And as the Lord commanded Moses and the children of Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt, Reuben the eldest son of Israel, the children of Reuben, Hanak, of whom comes the family of the Hanakites, of Palu, the family of the Paluites, mm -hmm. of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. Carmites. These are the families of Reub the Reubenites, and they that were numbered of them were 40 and 3,730. So now let's look at it on the screen. If we go through, it always do this. Okay. All right, so let's look at it on the screen. We have here, let me get rid of this. So we have here the numbers of the people. I'm going to put up two, I put up two numbers though, all right? There's the first census, that's what we read when we started numbers. Boys, huh? That's when we start first start. When we first started numbers, that's what we were reading the uh, first census, right? So what they what Reuben started off with is forty six thousand five hundred, and then the second census after all the people that that counted that whole forty six thousand five hundred died, right? Now all the children that were children that didn't get counted with that first first forty six hundred five hundred, they've now become adults, right? And you can see Reuben had a whole lot of kids because his number stayed about the same. So now he's 43, 730. Right? He only lost 2,000. You know what I'm saying? Almost 3,000 he lost. Then you got Simeon, 59, 300. He dropped down quite a bit, didn't he? Why might Simeon drop down quite a bit? Well, 
What was that? Uh, what Jacob told him? Was that curse? That might be part of it. Mm-hmm. Who came out of Simeon, though? We just read about him. Zimri. Zimri. And Zimri wasn't a nobody in Simeon. He was Simeon, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. So anything that Zimri do, you might expect for Simeonites to do. So it's likely that Zimri led more people into sin, which is why Simeon, uh, Simeon has the biggest drop. Because he might add some people that got caught up in that plague, right? That would have been able to make it into the land, but they got caught up in this plague and they died too. Right? So we see him with a huge drop. He lose 37,000 people. You know what I'm saying? Across the, the, the generations. You see uh, a net change for Gad, 5,000. Judah actually increased, right? He increased almost 2,000. Issachar almost increased 10,000. Zebulun almost increased, uh, he, he increased 30,000. Uh, 3,000. I mean, uh, 3,000. Then you got uh, Ephraim, he increased 20,000. Right? 20,000. Ephraim got a big number. The only number bigger than Ephraim's at the end is going to be Judah. Judah's huge. All right? Judah's a bad boy. That's a bad boy. There. You better leave Judah alone. You know That's a bad boy. Judah, who marched out first? Judah. You better believe it. Them boys, you know what I'm saying? Them boys are the biggest camp. We're going to march out first. We got to fight first. Right? Then you got Manasseh. He decreased by 8,000. 8, Even though numbers don't look like it. Yeah, I might type something wrong there. Um, then you have... Uh, they did only decrease... They increased 800. By, they yeah. increased by 300. Yeah, yeah I, so I don't they, know. They increased 300. I don't even know. I got to check them now. What number is say? What number is say there in the book? For a fine, fine uh, Manasseh for me. Then you got Benjamin. You know what I'm saying? He increased 10,000. You got Dan. He increased almost 2,000. Asher increased 11,000. Then you got uh, Naphtali. Naphtali decreased by 8,000. So overall, the whole, the whole tribe only decreased by almost 2,000 people. So overall, the Most High God was right. He was like, uh, all y'all can die, and I'll bring all y'all kids in here. The women and the children and all that, I'll bring all. Because look, it really ain't no effect. Manasseh had 52,700. 52,000? Yeah, so 52,000. Yeah, they increased them. So I have to fix up. Right? So that's the count of the people. Jump down to the end of that chapter. Let me see what we got there. Okay. These are they that were numbered by Moses and Eliezer, the priests, who numbered the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. Mm-hmm. But among these, there was not a man of them whom Moses and Aaron, the priests, numbered when they numbered the children of Israel in the wilderness of Sinai. So this first count, anybody who was included in that first count? All oh, dead. They were not included in this, except for who? Caleb and Yahushua, son of Nun, Joshua. These boys, all these boys died. 600, 3,550 people. So through the course, not all of them died at once, right? But through the course, some of them of natural cause. Some people just got sick and died. Some people just got old and died, right? But through the course of our, us being member, some people who got counted in that original number, when they got counted, they were 60 years old. Right? So they ain't had too much more to go anyway walking around the darn desert. So they died. Some people died of natural causes. Some people died for different reasons. Some people got caught up in these plagues and these punishments that we were dealing with. Right? At the end of the day, all of them died. Every last one of them that counted died except for Caleb and Yahushua. Let's go to the next chapter. Chapter 27, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It's chapter 27, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the sons of Hefer, the sons of Gilead, of the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And these, these are the families of his daughters, Mahala, Noah, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Tizra. And they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest, and before the princes 
and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Our father died in the wilderness, and he was not in the company of them that gathered themselves together against Yahuwah in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin and had no sons. Right? So what does that mean? If he died in his own sin and he had no sons, he died in the wilderness, he wasn't with these fools, he wasn't with all the foolishness. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. She was like, look, my father died in the wilderness. He wasn't with this foolishness now. He wasn't with all these boys that were rebelling against Moses now. Right? He died in his own sin. Just got old. That, 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 died a normal death is what she's saying. He didn't die like a regular person. It was a normal death. It might be, you know, it might be, oh, who knows why, how he actually died. Oh, but yeah, it's, he, his, he had his own mess. It wasn't nothing to do with all this special stuff that's going on now. So let's see what her request is to Moses. Why should the name of our, our father be done away from among his family because he has no son? Uh-huh. So all he has is daughters. He ain't got no son. Right? Keep going. Give unto us, therefore, a possession among the brothers of our father. And Moses brought their cause before Yahuwah. And Yahuwah spake to Moses, saying, the daughters of Zelophehad speak right. Right? Now the Most High God said to him, listen, the way we set things up is the male passed down to the male. Right? The female has options. The female can go live out on her own. The female can get a husband. Or the female can stay under her father. Right? If a female lived out on her own, she doesn't have any inheritance. Her inheritance would only come from having a husband or having a father. Anything else, she can have own stuff. She can have whatever she wants. She just wouldn't be able to have an inheritance. Nothing would pass down. Right? She can go buy her a house. She can go do this. She can go to a man at Isagar and buy his house from him if she wanted. If she had the money and she could do it. And he wanted to give it up. That's fine. Yeah, because if she were to have kids, wouldn't that inheritance go to her child's tribe, not hers? Well, let's say she had a son, right? Like you said. Her yeah, it would, it would come from her father, right? Yeah. Or the no, child's father. Yeah, the, yeah. Right? So... She technically wouldn't have an inheritance. She could pass down to her kids, right? And the kids would get whatever they get from their father. But, you know what I'm saying? She wouldn't have none. So now, what she's looking at is, the, what these sisters are looking at, or these daughters are looking at is, they're looking like, well, that's not quite fair in this situation. Because it's not, they're looking like, it's not like we just jumped out here and we run in the streets. Our father died in his own mess. And it just so happens, he don't have no, no sons. So now everything my father owned, what is supposed to, what's supposed to happen to it? Okay, we got it. We got the stuff that my father owned, of course. But now you about to be handing out land. That would go to his brother, wouldn't it? Huh? It would go to his brother. That's what they're about to tell us right now. Yeah. yeah. You, you about to have, but we don't know that yet. We looking like you about to hand out land to all the people. Everybody about to get designated. They own land. Like this is yours. You can build on it. And that's yours. We just talking about this. America, right? When America was set up, the first thing that they did is they just start handing out land to all these white folks. Right? That's why these white folks own so much. Because that land that they handed down or that, that they gave away or gave it to them for dirt cheap, they was able to build on that, build businesses, build houses, and then they can sell the land or they can pass that down to their family. And that's money for them. That's generational wealth. So the daughters wasn't dumb. These daughters looking at it like, whoa, 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 whoa. We about to be walking into a disadvantage if we don't talk to Moses. So they go talk to Moses. They say, okay, Moses. I get what you're saying. I'm just saying, my pop, he ain't dying none of that fool, isn't it? In other words, I don't feel like I should be punished. Because my, my pops, it wasn't like he was cursed, you know what I'm saying, for none of this stuff. He cursed for his own reasons, just like any of any the rest of us, right? So what I'm saying to you, Moses, is what are we supposed to do about this? Moses took that to the Most High God. Most High God say, women shouldn't speak. Now he said, the daughters of Zohar have to speak right. Most High God say, tell them women to shut up and sit their butt down and wrap their head. No. Most High God, he tell them they shouldn't be wearing pants. You know what he said? Now they right. Y'all better watch y'all darn mouth, you know what I'm saying? Misunderstanding this book. No, women ain't supposed to speak in the congregation. You're right. They supposed to learn that all subjectivity, but they not supposed to they they it ain't like they when the book say they supposed to remain silent, 
It's not talking about they, you know what I'm saying? They got to walk around like a darn mind. They got to be subject. Subject mean if I ask you a question or I give you an opportunity to speak, you can speak. And when they say something, guess what? Might be right. They ask you a question, guess what? The question might be coming from the right place. That's the most high God said about these young ladies. Keep going. Watch the book, sir. You shall surely give them a possession of an inheritance among their father's brothers. And you shall cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them. Uh huh. And you shall speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no son, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Mm hmm. And if he have no daughter, then if he you, have no daughter, what happened? Then you shall give his inheritance unto his brothers. That's right. So if a man has daughters only, no sons, his inheritance goes to his daughters as if it went to his sons. However, if he has no children, to pass his inheritance down to, then it goes to his brother. Right? This is going to tie in to another law and what ends up being very important for Yahushua. Right? There's two pieces of this, so this is going to be the first piece. Then at the very end, we'll see if we get to it today, but at the very end of Numbers, we're going to deal with the second half of it. So let's look at it. Let's keep going. That's why Yahushua able to give life to his brother. Boy. Boy. Let's see. And if his father have no brothers, then you shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family, and he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. Right. So judgment mean this is how you deal with this situation. What he's saying is that if he don't have any uh, sons, he only has daughters, you pass it down to the daughters. If he has no children whatsoever, you pass it over to the brother. If he don't have any brothers... Then from there, you get the next of kin. So in other words, the closest family member that he has. First, the closest male family member that he has, Usually you pass cousin. it to him. Oh, yeah. yeah, like a cousin. Mm -hmm. my, my father's brother's son. Um, but we see that played out in Ruth a little bit too. Yeah, we're going to get this is setting the groundwork for a lot of it. The second half of this that we read at the end of Numbers is going to get shed even more light because these, these women are smart. They're going to come back from a different angle, right? Oh, when they get the land. Hmm? When they get the land. After, uh, no, nah, they, ain't, they ain't got the land. Uh, yeah, I guess it, I guess they do because they from Manasseh, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I guess they do get the land. So we let's talk about, let's get to how they get the land first. Um, that's the end of that? No. Yeah. Keep going. And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into the Mount Abiram and see the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. And when you have seen it, though also thou also shall be gathered unto your people as Aaron your brother was gathered. For you rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation to sanctify me at the water before their eyes. That is the water of Meribah and Kadesh in the wilderness of Zin. And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord, the God of all, the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep with ha which have no shepherd. Now look, look how he talks to Moses. He said, Moses, yeah, your butt ain't going over either. Like, you know what I'm saying? Look, Moses think he mosey along. Moses, I got already told him this. Right? Moses think he mosey along. Like, yeah, man, we doing good. You know what I'm saying? Got a nice little count on the people. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I like it. I like it. We almost there, right? Then Moses, I got to tell him, now, your butt, you can sit your butt down too. You know what I'm talking about? Then Moses came back to him. He said, all right, well, let me make one request. If you're going to sit me down, make sure you put somebody, please, over the, over the people that can lead them in and out. Because Moses know how these people do. So he's looking like, man, you're going to have to put somebody. Listen. And you know, Moses probably looking at himself like, Look, this is a tough job. <laughs> Look, I don't know if you know God. This is not an easy job. So you can't just pick any old people. He's in there. He's trying to make sure, you know what I'm saying, God understands. Because he don't know. He's in there like, look, God, look. <laughs> this is, I've been struggling with this. Make sure, I mean, just don't lead these people to their own. You know what I mean? Oh, he looking at God like, I had to talk you out of killing these folks multiple times. If I'm, you probably going to kill these people. You got to look at it from Moses' point of view. Moses see himself as the person standing in between God and them. Now God said, you got to sit your butt down. It's like, oh, shoot. Who going to get these people now? So he said, man, you got to put them to put somebody over them. Yeah, who come next up, TJ? All my hard work. 
<laughs> anyway, let's read it. Let's see. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, mm -hmm. a man of whom is the spirit, and lay your hand upon him. You remember when, uh, when uh, Joshua got the spirit? He is amongst, I think, the 70. Mm -hmm. And he ended up getting the spirit. And you remember the people were sitting there, they looking like, man, some people out there that's prophesying, you know what I'm saying, doing all this extra stuff. And Joshua, he told Joshua, he was like, what, you jealous for my sake? That was Joshua. So Joshua had already got the spirit. Right? So he was like, man, take Joshua, you know what I'm saying? He, one of them, he already got the spirit, and he'd been running around with you. He'd been sitting there helping you out the whole time. He was one of the only people that got to come up with you to the mount. So Joshua has already experienced a few things. He already been there firsthand. Moses probably ain't even thinking of Joshua like that. Right? He probably not even thinking about him like that. But he's looking at it, he like, take Joshua. Moses like, oh. You know, you can imagine Moses sitting there like, oh, yeah, that ain't a bad choice. Actually. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's see. And set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation and give him charge in their sight. Right? Why would you have to do it in their sight? Because our people don't listen. You got to make sure Moses is okay with it. Yeah, everybody got to be on the same page. Yeah. Look, I'm handing it over to him. He the one in charge now. Right? When I go, it's going to be him. Make sure everybody know. Because look what they tried to do with Moses after everything he did. Now, who put you over, over us the whole time? Since Exodus, they've been asking, who put you over us? Moses been sitting here, you know what I'm saying? He turning darn snakes and the staffs and back and forth. He turning what He did all, a whole list of plagues on Egypt, brought the people out, split the sea, brought water out of nothing twice, right? And they looking at him like, <laughs> is you really, you know what I mean? So he knows, it's like, all right, look, most of guys like, no, I don't know, in front of everybody. You know what I'm saying? You need to hand it to him because you know how these people act, right? Now, but what we will say, right, you know, we'll flash, fast, fast forward just a little bit. Joshua ain't had none of them issues. Nah. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, he ain't go through none of the stuff them multiple times. Nah, yeah, nah. They, 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 they respected Joshua. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get into it. <clears throat> Just like we follow Moses, we'll follow you. That's right. Let's look at it. And you shall put some of your honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Mm -hmm. And he shall stand before Eliezer the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And at his word shall they go go out and his word they shall come in both he and all the children of israel with him even all the congregation mm -hmm. and moses did as the lord commanded him and he took joshua and set him before eliezer the priest and before all the congregation mm -hmm. and he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the lord commanded by the hand of moses mm -hmm. now let's go to uh actually let me uh I'm sure they do that. Hmm? So now, read the next chapter, verse 1. Right. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifices made by fire for a sweet savor unto me, shall you observe to offer unto me in their due seat. And you shall say unto them, This is the offering made by fire which you shall offer unto the Lord. Two lambs of the first year without spot, day by day, for a continual burnt offering. One lamb shall you offer in the morning, and the other lamb shall you offer at evening. And the tenth part of the ephah of flour for a meat offering mingled with the fourth part of a hen of beaten oil. So let's look up here. We have a daily offering, right? So every day... You got to give up two lambs, one in the morning, one in the evening. They both got a meat offering and they both got a drink offering. The drink offering is basically you take strong drink, you pour, you know, how, you know, how, you know how people, uh, you know what I'm saying? You got, y'all, you know, your kids may not know, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Gangsters, what happened is they lose somebody, they lose one of their boys. <laughs> they start pouring out drinks for the dead homie. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know what I'm saying? So they have some alcohol, some liquor or something, and they start pouring it out before they start drinking it. You know what I'm saying? You can pour this out for the dead, homie. Right? And the reason why that, what that came from is drink offerings. They pour it on the floor? They just pour it right on the ground. For 
It's mm-hmm. a drink offering. It's just a tradition. It's something stupid that, that just people do. Just remember your dead friends. Right? But this, the what it, what it originates from is the Most High God. Right? We will pour out strong drink for the Most High God. Right? The priest would do it. It wouldn't be on the altar. It would always be outside of the altar, but you'll pour out the strong drink. Right? So that's where this comes from. You'll have two lambs every single day without fail. This is continuous. This never stops. You have to continue this. You're going to see us a, a prophecy in the future. Right? When we get to, you know what I'm saying? When we get to, to, the, uh, to the prophetic books, you're going to see a prophecy that talks about when the daily sacrifice ends. This is what it's talking about. Right? This is every single day in the morning and in the evening, you make a sacrifice, a spotless lamb within the first year. Remember, we talked about tithing a couple weeks ago. We talked about how the people gave a tithe to the pre I mean to the Levites, and then the Levites take a tenth of everything they have and they give it to the priests. This is where these animals come from. Because they got to give a sacrifice every single day. So they're gonna have to have a lot of a lot of animals. So this is where it comes from. <sighs> right so um the next thing would be a sabbath offering so this one is on top of the daily offering so now daily every day seven days a week you're gonna have an offering and then one of those seven days the seventh day of the week you're gonna have the sabbath offering so then you're going to do two lambs on the Sabbath in the morning, one for the continuous daily offering and then one for the Sabbath day. And then you gonna have two lambs in the evening, one for the continuous daily offering and one for the Sabbath day. So it's double on the Sabbath is double what you do on the daily. Does that make sense? Well, y'all should say uh, the priests make an offer. On offering the on the Sabbath and, and are blameless. blameless. Yeah. That's right. They do twice the work on the Sabbath and they blameless for it. Right. Then you have. The new month offering. So now every new month, you have on top of the continual service. So every, no matter what, everything we talking about, the daily sacrifice is happening, right? Morning and evening. So that's just a given that's going to happen either way. Then you had a new month offering. On top of that, you're going to have two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs. You got a meat offering and the drink offering. What you got? A bull. A bull. A bull. Yeah, it's like a young bull. Bull ox. Bull is like short for bullet. All right. Let's see what else we got. <laughs> All right. Now we go go into our appointed times. All right. For our appointed times, you have the Passover offering. Now, Passover leads into unleavened bread. The unleavened bread lasts how long? A week. Seven days, right? So for each of the seven days of unleavened bread, each day you sacrifice two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs, spotless in their first year, right? And then on top of that, you have to have a sin offering, which is with a goat. So you remember we already went over the sin sin offering and all the different types of sin offerings you can have. This is the goat type of sin offering, right? And then you also you have your, your meat offering and your drink offering. Feeks of weeks is the same thing. Two young bullocks. You should, except get, the, you should get this put like on like a like a banner or like a like a calendar type and just like hang them in like you know it would be tight if I can think of a good design. Don't do that. Don't put that in your mouth, baby girl. Um so then the feast of weeks, that's only one day, right? So they do this for one day, but the same thing. Day of trumpets, um, same thing, or very similar at least. Uh, you have two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs, meat offering, and uh, drink offering. Then you also had a day of atonement. Now, day of atonement, almost the same, except it's only one young bullock, one ram, seven lambs. Now, remember, on all of these days that we're mentioning, you also have, day, you have, also have sacrifices that's specific to the appointed time. So, like on day of atonement, for example, you always going to sacrifice two goats. Or it's going to be two goats involved, at least. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that, that doesn't discount the other sacrifices that stipulated elsewhere in the book. These are on top of everything else. Right? Then outside of the Day of Atonement. Hold on, baby girl. Outside of the Day of Atonement, we have the Feast of Tabernacles. 
Now, this is the most complicated one. All right? The Feast of Tabernacles lasts how long? Seven days. Eight, Eight days. days. Eight days. Right? So the Feast of Tabernacle, it lasts seven, it lasts eight days. Now each day, it starts off, first day, you sacrifice 13 young bullocks, so it's a whole lot, two rams, 14 lambs, spotless in their first year, and a goat offering. Right? That's the first day. Yeah, the priest had to ask God if the people could help him when they had so much that one time. Yeah, buddy. You know what I'm saying? When they were resetting everything up. Who was that? Joseph? Josiah? It might have been him. Yeah. Or Solomon. But uh, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of work. Then, the next day, right? It drops down by one. So, 13 young bullocks. So, the next day, it's 12 young bullocks. And it keeps going down until you get to the sixth day. Or the seventh day. Then on the eighth day, it's only one young bullock. Right? Everything else stays the same. What we got in uh, chapter, what chapter we was that? We are on 28. 28. So look at the, look at 30. What do we got in 30? vows well yeah this is uh yeah this is good one. all right let's read all right well actually we're not gonna read through the vows in the interest of time let's look at let's look back at the screen so we got the vows so this is how the vows break down right any man or woman or single woman that makes a vow they're accountable to that vow if they don't do it a vow is a promise yes so they, 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 if they make a vow, they're accountable to that vow. I mean, they got to do what they say. And if they don't do what they say, then they got to face the penalty of not doing what they say. Right. They themselves are the ones. Now, like we talked about before, a woman that is under her father. And a woman that is with a husband, they get the inheritance of that father and husband in the same way or in a similar way, a woman that's under her father. If he hears her make a vow, he can cancel it. So a woman can sit there and she can shake an agreement. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to deliver the money to you. I'm going to buy this house from you. Let's seal the deal right now. Right? If her father hear that foolishness, he looking like, you ain't buying that darn house. Sit your butt darn down. No, we ain't doing that. Even though she already shook on it. And she gave, think of, think of when we say vow here, think of it like these people look at contracts. Mm -hmm. Right? Our word, us just saying it. That was it. That was the contract for us. Right? Now they sign stuff and you get a stamp and notarized and all that. But think of this vow as being the contract. So if we put it in contract terms, just, just so we can understand it, right? Know that what we're talking about is not a contract in the same sense. You say it, you accountable to it. Right? But if we put it in contract terms to make it better, easily, more easily to understand, imagine if a woman signed a contract and her dad was there while she signed it, he can say no and then rip that contract up and there's no penalty for it. He can say, no, nah, that's not, that's not going to fly. She can't, nope. Nope, that's not going to fly. Right? There's no penalty for anybody if her father hears it and at the time that he hears it says, no, nah, that's not going to fly. Right? If there's a married woman and she has a husband and he hears it, same as the father, right? He can cancel it. There's no penalty for anybody. However, if a married woman says something, the husband hears it, but chooses not to cancel it at that time. He agrees with, with his wife, right? He says, no, nope, no, nope, I think that's, you know, I think that's how I go. I think that's right. I think she can handle it. I think we can handle it, whatever it might be. He agrees with her. She seals the deal. But then two weeks later, he's like, I don't know about that. He can come back and cancel it for her. But now it falls on him. Right? So whatever she signed up for, the penalty of not doing it will fall on him. Right? We're going to come back to this because this is a law that sets up what happens with Yahushua. Right? This law stipulates how Yahushua is able to provide salvation to everybody in Israel and everybody that, that falls under the banner of Yahushua. Okay? So we're going to come back to this a little bit later. 
Let's look at uh, chapter 31. What we got? Uh, getting at the Midianites. Let's look at it. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, chapter 31, verse 1. Numbers chapter 31, verse 1. Numbers chapter 31, verse 1. Let's see what the book say. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shall you be gathered unto your people. Uh-huh. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Mm -hmm. Of every tribe, a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to the war. Mm -hmm. So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, twelve thousand armed for war. And Moses sent them to war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, to the war with the holy instruments and the, tri and the trumpets to blow in his hand. All right, so you see how many people we had, right? When we count, we had like 600,000, all right? But he was like, yeah, this is light work. Just take 12,000, right? 1,000 from every tribe. You take a total of 12,000, go out there and fight them, right? That's a small amount in comparison to everything, everybody we got ready for war, Right? So let's see, keep going. And they warred against the Midianites as the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. And they slew all the kings of Midian, they slew the kings of Midian, beside the rest of them that were slain, namely Evi and Rechem and Zer and Ur and Reba, five kings of Midian. Balaam, also the son of Beor, they slew with the sword. And the children of Israel took all the women of the of Midian captives and their little ones, and took the spoil of their cattle and all their flocks and their god and their goods. And they burnt all their cities wherein they dwelt and all their goodly castles with fire. And they took all the spoil and all the prey, both of men and of beasts. Uh -huh. They brought the captives and the prey and the spoil unto Moses and Eleazar the priest and unto the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the camp at the plains of Moab, which are by Jordan near Jericho. And Moses and Eleazar the priest and all the princes of the congregation went forth to meet them outside the camp. And Moses was angry with the officers of the host, with the captains over thousands and the captains over hundreds, which came from the battle. And Moses said unto them, Have you saved all the women alive? Behold, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass against Yahuwah in the manner of Peor. Mm -hmm. And there was a plague among the, the congregation of the Lord. Let's read that again. These caused, he said, look, y'all saved the women alive. These caused the trespass, right? At the who? At the council of who? At the council of Balaam to commit trespass against the Lord in the matter of Peor. So now we know. Remember last week, the Most High God stood in the way of Balaam when he was riding on his donkey. And his donkey could see it. And his donkey was turning out the way. And it started to crush his leg up against the wall. And Balaam is whooping the darn donkey because he don't understand what's going on. Because he can't see the same vision that the donkey is having. And in his vision, the donkey starts speaking to Balaam. And Balaam is in the vision, so he starts talking to the donkey like it's a, like it's a man or a woman. Right? And he started having a conversation with the donkey, and the donkey telling him, man, there's an angel right there about to kill you. All of a sudden, now, Balaam can see the darn angel. And the angel say, your way before me is perverse. Balaam was like, I don't know what I did, but I sinned. If you want me to turn around, I'll do it. Most of God said, no, you keep going and only say what I told you to say. We read it. He only said what he told him to say. However, after that, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Midianite and the Moab women came on, and all of a sudden they started attracting our men, and we started worshiping their God, and that is what starts the plague. It was at the council of Balaam that this happened. Balaam began to give counsel, like, listen, I can't curse these people. Let's go back. Go, um, I wish I remember where it was. This gotta be chapter 24 maybe no i gotta be like chapter 23 it's like 20 23 or 22 i think you know what i'm looking for i want to say it's maybe his first his first blessing go to his first blessing for me and when he, he said and the lord put a word in balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and you shall speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab, and he took up the parable. Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram out of the mountains. This what you look for? Shall I, how shall I curse whom God is not cursed? There we go. Here we go. Read this right here. How should I what? How shall I curse whom God is not cursed? Uh-huh. 
Or how shall I defy whom God is not defied? Uh huh. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Uh huh. The people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Uh huh. Who can count the dust of Jacob and the number of the fourth part of Israel? Uh huh. Let me die the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. Uh huh. And Balak said unto Balaam, What have you done unto me? I took you. I took thee to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them all together. Uh huh. And he answered and said. Must I not take heed to speak that which the Lord has put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray thee, with me to another place from where you may see them. You shall see the, but the utmost part of them, and shall not be, and shall not see them all, and curse them from there. And he brought me unto into the field of Zephoim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by the burnt offering while I meet the Lord yonder. And the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again unto Balak and say this. And when he came to him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What is the Lord spoken? And he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Hearken unto me, you son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Uh huh. Has he said and shall he not do it? Uh huh. Or has he spoken and shall he not make it good? Yep. Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed. And he I said, cannot, Look. I've received commandment to bless. And that's what the Most High God did is bless. Watch this. And he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. He said, I can't change that. Most High God like, look, when the blessing go out, it can't be changed. Watch this. Remember, Balaam is getting this put into his mouth by the Most High God. So Balaam is learning as the Most High God is doing this. Watch this though. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. He has not what? Beheld iniquity in Jacob. Now the Most High God is communicating through Balaam. And through Balaam, he's telling them, I sent out a blessing. I can't reverse it. Why? I ain't seen no iniquity in him. He's not doing that wrong. I'm blessing him. I can't reverse it. I don't see no iniquity in him. Balaam, sharp as a darn tack. He picked that up. He's scheming. He's looking like, listen, listen, listen. Let me, let me explain to you how this works. Because you got to imagine Balak is on his butt. Like, man, I called you down here to bless these boy. I mean, to curse these boy. You blessed him these three times. Wait, 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 wait. And then you said a prophecy that still didn't make me look too great. Yeah, I'm like, look at So they go away. What can I get out? Balaam, you can just imagine Balaam explaining the whole thing to him. Like, no, 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 man. You don't understand how God worked. If God tell me to do something, I can't do it. It ain't like these boys was like sinning. If these boys were sinning, that you know, that's something then God would curse them himself. But they not sinning. And you probably Balaam, like, okay, well. I can make them sin. What's the sin against? You would have to, you would have to have your women go down there. Gallivanting from them, get them to serve your God. Something crazy, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Then what do people do? I got some good looking women. They can get this done. So you telling me if that happens, he cur God to curse him and say, I ain't got to curse nobody. That's how I imagine the thing happening. But ultimately, Balaam gave him the counsel. He gave him the information to cause the people to be cursed. And immediately after those prophecies, what happened? The people was cursed. 24,000 people got killed. Right? Phineas had to stop it by sticking a javelin through the stomach of one of our, our through the stomach of Zimri and through one of the women. Right? Keep going, watch this. So now that's why Moses is mad, because Moses is looking like these the same women that beguiled y'all, tricked y'all into serving their gods. It caused the plague to break out against us. Right? And y'all gonna save these women alive? Y'all gonna spare them and take them captive? Watch what Moses say to him. Now therefore, kill every male among the little ones. Kill every male? Even the kids is what he's saying. And kill every woman that has known a man by lying with him. And kill every woman that ain't a virgin. Because the thought there would be that she hasn't had a chance to be corrupted yet. She's a young woman, haven't had a chance to be corrupted yet. You could take them as servants now. Right? Keep going. But all the women, children that have not known a man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. Mm -hmm. And do ye and do ye abide without the camp seven days? 
whosoever has killed any person and whoever has touched any slain, purify both yourselves and your captives on the third day and on the seventh day. Mm -hmm. and remember, remember, we got the law of the um, water of purification. The water of purification with the red heifer, right? So that's what he's talking about now. Keep going. And purify all your raiment and all that is made of skins and all work of goat's hair and all things made of wood. Mm -hmm. And Eliezer the priest said unto the men of war which went to the battle, this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord commanded Moses. Only the gold and the silver, the brass, the iron, the tin, and the lead, everything that may abide, everything that may abide the fire, ye shall make it go through the fire, and it shall be clean. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it shall be purified with the water of separation. Mm -hmm. And all that abides not, not the fire, ye shall make go through the water. And you shall wash your clothes on the seventh day, and you shall be clean. And afterward, ye shall come into the camp. Yeah, and that testifies Yahweh sure too. Testify more of us with Yahweh sure. You know what I'm saying? Because when we make it in, a lot of us are gonna make it in as by as by a fire with nothing else. So it's the only thing only thing that make it in is what what makes it through the fire. Mm -hmm. All right, keep going. And you shall wash it. Oh wait, my. And then the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the sum of the prey that was taken, both of men and of beasts, you, Eliezer the priest, and the chief fathers of the congregation, and divide the prey into two parts mm -hmm. between them that took of war upon them. Who went out to battle in between all the congregation and levy a tribute unto the Lord of the men of war, which went out to battle. One soul of 500, both of the persons and of the beeves and of the donkeys and of the sheep. Take it on their half and give it unto Eliezer, the priest for a heave offering unto, of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the children of Israel's half, you shall take one portion of 50 of the persons of the bees of the donkeys and of the flocks and all manner of beasts. And give them unto the Levites, which keep the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Eliezer the priest did as the Lord commanded Moses. And the booty, being the rest of the prey, which the men of war had caught, was 600,000, 7,000, 7, 5,000 sheep. 600,000 and 7,000, 5,000 sheep. 70,000, 5,000 sheep, sorry. And threescore and 12,000 bees, and threescore and 1,000 donkeys, and 30 and 2,000 persons in all. Of women that had not known a man by lying with him. And the half, which was the portion of them that went out to war, was in number 300,000 and 7 and 30,000 and 500 sheep. The Lord's tribute of the sheep was 600 and threescore and 15. And of the beeves were 30 and 6,000, which the Lord's tribute was threescore and 12. And the donkeys were 30,000 and 500, of which the Lord's tribute was threescore and 1. Okay, skip down some, skip down some, get past the count. So it's telling you how everything got divided up, right? The count, or not telling you everything. It's telling you the count of how things got divi divided up. Let's skip, let's skip down a little bit. And they said unto Moses, Thy servants have taken the sum of the men of war, which are under our charge, and there lacks not one man of us. Mm -hmm. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord that every man has gotten of jewels of gold, chains, bracelets, rings, earrings, and tablets to make an atonement for our souls before Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. And Moses and Eliezer the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels and all gold of the offering that they offered up to the Lord of the captains of thousands and the captains of hundreds was mm -hmm. 16,750 shekels. All right, so what they said is they looking like we went to this war. It was 12,000 of us that went, and not one of us died. Everybody came back. They were like, this is amazing. We took 12,000, not one of us died. This is amazing, right? Keep going. And Moses and Eliezer, the priest, took You can the see why the Moabites were scared and why the Midianites were scared, because that's how many people. They were much more people. We were looking at, man, they were looking at us. They look like, man, there's so many of them. It's more of them than us. Right? So the Midianites and the Moabites were like, man, what are we going to do? We whooped them out with only 12,000 of our people. We got 600 people ready for war. 600,000 people working, ready for war. All they had to do was make peace, but, you know. No, nah, they ain't that option, though. Dude, Midianites? Mm-hmm. They not Amorites. Yeah, but they didn't, they didn't, they didn't, we didn't, we didn't approach, we didn't approach yeah, them yeah. to take over their stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what they was looking at is like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these people just took over there. They just took over them. You know what I'm saying? They look. They looking at that defense. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do we preempt this? What are we gonna do? They thought it was war. All they had to do really is just sit their butt down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just see how it play out. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But they had to jump out there. They had to try to figure it out in defense of their people. All right? Let's see. 
And Moses and Eliezer the priest took the gold of the captains of thousands and hundreds and brought it into the tabernacle of the congregation for a memorial for the children of Israel before the Lord. Well, we got the next chapter. 32. Now, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. Mm -hmm. And when they saw that the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead that beheld, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the prince of the congregation, saying, A troth and Debon and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Elayla and Shebam and Nebo and Beon, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel is the land for cattle, and their servants have, and your servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in your sight, let this land be given unto your servants for a possession, and bring us not over Jordan. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brother go to war, and you shall sit here? And why discourage the heart of the children of Israel from going over in the land which the Lord has given them? The same, your fathers did the same when I sent them to Kadesh Barnea to see the land. Mm -hmm. For when they went up to the valley of Eshcol, they saw the land and they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land which the Lord has given them. So you can look at Moses and he's being extra careful, right? Moses was like, listen, I sent these people up into Canaan. And when they was in Canaan, they came back and started talking about, man, look, these people too big. That put the people in the place of a discouragement where they didn't want to go to war. He is like, listen, if y'all try to settle down right here in the east and try to get yourself comfortable and all that, that's going to make the people like, well, if Reuben and them want to settle down, we don't want to go over without them. That's crazy. He said, man, you're going to mess around and discourage the people the same way they discourage. And we saw what happened. Moses is nervous about this. He looked like, man, y'all got to stop messing up the plan. <laughs> right? So he react to him like, no, this is not going to work. Why would you discourage the people? I'm trying to tell you how it's going to play out. God don't mess with this type of stuff. He told us specifically what to do. God don't like us trying to make no curveballs. And not. Trust me, this is not going to work. Right? Let's see what happens. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time. And he swear, saying, surely none of the men that came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swore unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me, mm -hmm. except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, uh, the, Ken, the Kenizzite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, mm -hmm. for they have wholly followed the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until that generation had done, uh, for 40 years until all the generation that had done the evil in the sight of the Lord was consumed. Mm -hmm. And behold, you are risen up in your father's stead, an increase of sinful men to argument, to argue, to augment yet the fierce anger of the Lord toward Israel. Mm -hmm. For if you turn away from after him, he will yet again leave them in the wilderness and you shall destroy all this people. Mm -hmm. And they came near unto him and said, we will build sheepfolds here for our cattle and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will go ready armed before the children of Israel until we have brought them into their place. And our little ones shall dwell in fenced cities because of the inhabitants of the land. We will not return unto our houses until the children of Israel have inherited every man his inheritance. For we will not inherit with them on yonder side of Jordan or forward because our inheritance has fallen to us on this side of Jordan eastward. And Moses said unto them, if you will do this thing, if you will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until you have driven out his enemies from before him and the land be subdued before the Lord. Then afterward, you shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel. And this land shall be your possession before the Lord. All right. But if you will not do so, behold, you have sinned against the Lord and you and you and be sure your sin will find you out. All right. So now what Moses is saying is, oh, well, no, I mean, if y'all still going to fight, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to lead it? Oh, you're going to go in and you're going to wait until everybody get a piece and then you're going to go back? He like, oh, well, if that's the case, you good. You know what I'm saying? However, if your old butt pull any type of trickery, you know what I'm saying? You switch it up even in the slightest. He said, your sin going to find your butt out. Right? What else we got? Build ye your cities for your little ones and folds for your sheep and do that which, you, which proceeds out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben spake unto Moses, saying, Thy servants will do as my Lord commands. 
Our little ones, our wives, our flocks, and all our cattle shall be there in the cities of Gilead. Mm -hmm. But your servants will pass over, every man armed for war, before the Lord to battle, as my Lord said. So concerning them, Moses commanded Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the chief fathers of the tribes of Is uh, the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben will pass with you over Jordan, every man armed to battle before the Lord, and the land shall be subdued before you, then you shall give them the land of Gilead for a possession. But if they will not pass over with you armed, they shall have possessions among you in the land of Canaan. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, saying, As the Lord has said unto your servants, so will we do. We will pass over armed before the Lord into the land of Canaan, that the possession of our inheritance on this side, Jordan, may be ours. And Moses gave unto them, even to the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben and to the half tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the, of the Amorites and the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the land which the cities thereof, the coast with the cities thereof, the coast, even the cities of the country round about. And the children of Gad built Debon, Atroth, Eroer, and Atroth, so, Sophan, and Jazer, and jo, Jogbeha. And so Beth now let's Nimrod. just look at it, right? Let's look at it on the screen. So here we have So here we had a map. So everything on the east side or on the right side of the map, you have where it say East Manasseh, Gad and Reuben. That's what they talking about. We started to enter. Let me just walk around. You know what I'm saying? We started to enter right there where it say Edom. So remember, we went around Edom and Edom wouldn't let us in. So we had to go around the long way. We had to come all the way around the east side of Edom. Right. And then we had to come up to Moab. Right. And that's where we started to get into the fights. Yeah, around that way. That's where we came into Moab. And that's when we started to get into the fight. So you remember the King Sihon? We whooped him out. There was another king we whooped out. Then, you know what I'm saying? We just got rid of the rest of the. So we just took over all of what's there in Moab. Now, then this last fight that we having, we're talking about we are going to take over everything that we see right up there in the east. So where say Reuben, Gad and East Manasseh, all that land of the Moabites and the, uh, uh, the Moabites and the Ammonites, all that land that we're taking. Right. That was land that was previously not on this map, but previously that was land that the, the Moabites and the Ammonites owned. The Ammonites still own some of it, but we're going to deal with them next. Right. But that was all of that. That's all the land that we ended up taking right here. So that's the land that we're talking about that they're taking over. On the left hand side, that's the rest of the tribes. So right there, there's Philistines, there's Canaanites, it's all groups of people that's in those lands right now that we're gonna have to go and those territories are gonna be divided out. I thought Dan was all the way at the top. Dan, uh Dan, yeah, Dan is supposed to be yeah, all the way at the top. Take from Dan to Beersheba. But I think the uh I think this is the initial. So you remember initially Dan didn't want to go. Oh, that's right. And then they it was wandering all the way. Yeah. <laughs> But um, but yeah, Dan is supposed to be at the top. So this th now what what we we not gonna read the next couple chapters. But what they do is they talk about the divide. They talk about one the borders. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, most our God tells us what the borders of the land is, and our border is gonna be from Edom all the way up. You know what I'm saying? So they, this captures the borders of our land. Then also one of the things that the next couple cha chapters talk about is how we divide the land. Who gonna get what parts of the land? Right before we even get over there. We talking about how it's going to be divided up. So we're looking at that. Then um, the next thing is uh, the sanctuary cities or the cities, the Levitical cities. So now the Levites, because they don't have an inheritance with the rest of the tribes, the Levites end up getting a piece or a little bit of land in each tribe. So think of it like you have um, think of it like uh, federal land. You know what I'm saying? So you have like different states. But every state has some federal land in it where it's like, you know, what I'm saying that's the feds. You know, what I'm saying? you can't do nothing with it. This that another is they land. You got to help support it. That's just how it goes. It's part of being in America. Right. So that's kind of how this is, is you got Levites that are kind of like government. Right. And then they got a little bit of land in all the different tribes. Right. All the different territories. So if you look at all the white dots and look at all the green dots. Um, those are all different territories and also the red dots. The red dots end up being what's called cities of refuge. So now city of refuge is talking about a city that's a Levite city, right? 
that um, if somebody commits manslaughter, so in other words, if somebody kills somebody on an accident, they can hide out. They kind of hide. It's kind of like jail at the same time, but they hide out in this city and they got to stay there until the high priest of that city dies, right? Or the high priest dies, right? Once the high priest dies, then they can go to the next city or they, they, can, they can leave that city. While they're there, they get protection from anybody who wants to avenge the death of maybe their family member or their loved one or whatever it might be. So those are the city of refuge. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like jail for a person that, um, that uh, commits manslaughter, but it's not completely jail because they're not really guilty. They just have to be, uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? They have to be detained in that city. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily in a cage, but they got to be, you know what I'm saying? They got to stay within the bounds of that city in order to have the protection. If they leave that city, they can leave, but you on your own. You know it's what I'm like saying? Somebody out. come out there and try to touch you, ain't nobody going to, your blood is on yourself. It's like being out on bail without actually having to go back to jail. Yeah. Um, what else? Yeah, so that's the, that's the three topics of the next few chapters. Let's try to end off with uh, the last chapter. This is uh, chapter 36. Okay. It's overfill. Did it fill over? Did it go over? Is the water spilling out? Yeah. And the chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph, came near. And spake before Moses and before the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. Now watch this, right? So you remember we talked about the daughters of Zelophehad, right? Mm -hmm. And we was like, man, these some smart young ladies. So now we're about to approach this thing from the other side. Watch this. And they said, the Lord commanded my Lord to give the land for an inheritance by lot to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. My Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zelophehad, our brother, unto his daughters. And if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, then shall their inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our fathers. It shall be put into the inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. Mm -hmm. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put into the, into, unto the inheritance with the tribe whereunto they are received. Right? Now listen, these are people who are thinking about our law. And they're thinking about their inheritance. They look like, okay. Let me make sure I understand how this works. I heard the judgment of Zelophehad, right? And God bless them young women, right? They, you know, they're like, they, need, they do need some inheritance. But if they get married. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You mean to tell me that they can go marry somebody from Reuben now? And now when they have a kid, our brother stuff becomes a Reubenite? That don't make no sense to me. Because what, what happened, right? We're not talking about just like, oh, I have this nice artifact that I want to give down to my son. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, she married a Reubenite. Oh, okay, well, technically a Reubenite owns this artifact now. That's, a, that's not a big deal. We're talking about territory. Mm -hmm. You are in my borders, right? This is my house, right? That's my brother's house. My brother ain't had no kids. That was, my brother ain't had no sons. He passed it down to his daughters. That's their house. They decide to marry a man from Judah. Whose house is that now? Judah. That's a man from Judah's house. So now Judah has territory inside of uh, Manasseh. Right? That's what they were looking like. That's foolishness. I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? I don't like it. Because it's too Y'all can, can take it all to, over. Right. You can't come back to us. Yeah, Jubilee won't. That's, a, that's another point. Mm -hmm. He's looking at the law of Jubilee. He's like, Jubilee don't protect this. Mm -hmm. What do we do with this? So let's see what happens. And when the Jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then there shall their inheritance shall be put unto their inheritance of the tribe whereunto they are received. So shall their inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. And Moses commanded the children of Israel according to the word of the Lord, saying, the tribe of the sons of Joseph has said, well, mm -hmm. this is the thing which the Lord does command concerning the daughters of Zelophehad, saying, let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. Mm -hmm. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel removed from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. 
And every daughter that possesses an inheritance in any tribe of the children of Israel shall be wife unto one of the family of the tribe of her father, that the children of Israel may enjoy every man the inheritance of his fathers. Neither shall the inheritance remove from one tribe to another tribe, but every one of the tribes of the children of Israel shall keep himself to his own inheritance. Even as the Lord commanded Moses, so did the daughters of Zelophehad. For Mahala, Tizra, and Hogla, and Milcah, and Noah, the daughters of Zelophehad, were married unto their father's brother's sons. And they were married unto the families of the sons of Manasseh, the sons of Joseph, and their inheritance remained in the tribe of the family of their father. These are the commandments of the, uh, and the judgments which the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses unto the children of Israel in the plains of Moab by Jordan near Jericho. So you see, Most High God set up a stipulation. He said, listen, listen, listen. They can marry whoever they want to. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to sanction who, who can marry who. They can marry whoever they see fit. However, because this situation happened to them this way, they got to marry within their tribe. Right? They got to marry within their tribe because that would then cause all of their stuff to stay within the tribe. Mm -hmm. Right? So now, with those two judgments, that sets up Yahushua. We're going to talk about it when we finally get to Yahushua. We're going to break it down a little bit more. it will be too much to kind of go into now. But you will see that that sets up Yahushua. Why Yahushua has a virgin mother, right? Why Yahushua uh, uh, is able to pass, even with a vir virgin mother, is able to pass down everything from David, the king, right? We're going to learn about all that, and it's going to make a lot more sense. But you have to keep this part in mind because a lot of people lose this piece and they get lost. And that's why a lot of these Hebrew running around. No, nah, man, there wasn't no virgins. He virgin. If you look at the translation, shut your darn mouth. You don't know what you're darn talking about. Right. That was the end of it. So we just finished out numbers, the whole book of numbers. You know what I'm saying? So, so far we've made it through through uh, the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus and the book of numbers. We technically only have one more book in Moses's law. Right. It's a recap. And that's going to be a recap of everything that we just went over. So we're going to shoot through Deuteronomy starting next week. All right. Then after we get through Deuteronomy. Oh, you know what we should do? We should do Job. And then we should do Deuteronomy. Oh, why? Because we haven't touched Job. And technically Job already happened. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, so we should have did Job after Genesis. Yeah. Yeah, we probably should have. But I just didn't want to because Genesis flowed right into Exodus. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to break the flow. This way, since most of this is going to be a recap anyway, we get a break, do this, and then we can recap, you know what I'm saying, for anything that we forgot. So it might be a good time to do Job, because I wouldn't want to do Job after Deuteronomy either. Yeah, no, because you got to go, right, gotta into go right into it. Yeah. So this might be the best place to, to break. Yeah, well, yeah, we I probably should have broke it. We should probably should have broke it within Genesis. You know what I'm saying? Like, did half of Genesis, did Job, yeah. and then, you know what I'm saying? continue through i think always like touch my heart you know what i'm saying when i read about how moses had to go out yeah <laughs> yeah that'd be i was like dang that one's coming <laughs> any questions yeah all right well let's pray out <laughs>